mind when you hear the word debt, a person who owes a boatload of dough. If you or someone you know is in debt, you will need a seasoned money professional to toss you a life preserver and save you from drowning in a tidal wave of bills you are required to pay. Good thing we have Donna Lascala, president of Comprehensive Divorce Solutions here with tips and suggestions on how to do that. Donna is also a registered financial consultant and certified divorce financial analyst. Donna, welcome. Thank you, Alyssa. It's a pleasure to be back on the show. Always a pleasure to have you. So what is the definition of debt? So, you know, debt has taken on a very negative connotation for most people, but it's really an obligation requiring one party to pay another party an agreed-upon value And it's merely a financial transaction. The problem is that we've imbued it with so much emotion that we have fear around debt. But it's not all bad. Yeah, you you had mentioned that when we were talking a little off mic, that not all debt is bad. So what are some examples of what those are? Okay, so a mortgage is debt. A student loan is debt. A car loan is debt. Those are things that we are used to having that are distinctly different from equity, but we know that if we want to purchase a home, most of us don't have the cash to plunk down and purchase a home, so we have to take out a mortgage. We want to buy a new car. We probably don't have the kind of money that require that is required for the car that we want, so we take out a car loan. Same thing with student loans. But these things that then become very fraught with emotion, like credit card debt, lead people to feel that all debt is bad, and it's not. Because the interesting thing about debt is that if you don't have some kind of debt-to-loan, debt-to-equity ratio, it's very hard for you to actually live in this world that we have created and the economy that we've created. You know, as a financial expert, you are trained to help clients tackle debt. And debt can incur, and and you gave some great examples uh, just before, which I want to elaborate on, uh, can happen while a person was married, from credit cards, lifestyle, uh, medical procedure, and debt may also accumulate because of a divorce. So how do you help clients face this and get out of being in the red? So, you know, the first thing we really need to focus on is what caused the situation. And whether you're going through a divorce or not, but a lot of times in divorce, it's because of financial infidelity, because most of this credit card debt or this other kind of debt that has such a negative connotation was probably accumulated by one or both parties of of the marriage, and they didn't really tell their spouse the truth. So, and we've had this part of the conversation before, about the difference between need and want. We've become a very need-oriented society, but it's really more of a want than a need because when you get down to basics, what do you need? You need a roof over your head, you need clothing on your back, and you need food. But a lot of these other things that we extend ourselves over, we really don't need. We want them because it makes us feel better. It makes us feel safe. It makes us feel good about, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, as the, as the saying always is. So you really have to start thinking about how this situation became what it is to begin with, and then start to look at the reality of your situation. So you have this much income, you have these stated bills, your mortgage, your electricity, your, uh, you know, your, your oil, your gas, your car payment, you know, all of those things, your phone. So these are the things that you're obligated to pay. What else is it that you're incurring that is adding to this load? And how do we separate them into columns? This is what I absolutely have to pay. This is what I can probably either get rid of altogether or scale back. Now, and that's you really are the also- first step. 
Now, you are also a financial neutral, yet another title, and your list of accomplishments. So what suggestions do you give clients when it comes to the subject of debt and trying to handle it properly for settlement purposes? Okay, so the thing, the thing that most people don't really understand or want to acknowledge is that just like accumulated assets, accumulated debt is a marital asset, is a marital situation. So in equitable distribution, you're not only talking about the assets that have been accumulated, but you're also talking about the obligations, the debts that have accumulated. And just because a credit card may be in one spouse's name versus the other's, doesn't mean that both spouses are not responsible. Now, again, there's the issue of the word equal versus equitable, and that always is a difficult concept to discuss because it may not be 50-50, it may be 60-40, it may be 70-30, but basically the court system in a divorce really does not like the concept of the, quote, innocent spouse. Well, I was married to him, but I didn't know that he had these gambling debts. I didn't know that he had this credit card debt. I didn't know that he had five cars. Really? Are you sure? You really want to go there? They don't really like that idea of one spouse saying, not my problem. So when you get down to brass tacks, you really have to say, okay, let's stop playing the blame game and let's focus on how we fix this and talk about what actually was accrued as far as debt. Where did it come from? What was the money used for? Did each spouse benefit from the debt or was it really one versus the other? And put it all down on paper and then you can discuss from that point forward how to deal with the mess. What happens when those unpaid bills get turned over to a collection agency? Well, you know, it's very funny because we talk about the words credit report, and a lot of people really don't understand what their credit report is and what it reflects. And I kind of remind people, like, you know when we were in elementary school and somebody used to say, oh, well, that's going on your permanent record? Well, the adult version of that is your credit report because everything you do from a monetary standpoint, what you earn, what you owe, appears on your credit report. And every delinquency is going to affect you adversely. So even if you're a month late paying something, the more late you are, the worse it becomes. And that affects your credit score and can continue to affect it for a long time after the mistake has been made, after you don't pay that bill. It's going to be there for a while, and you have to go through a lot of red tape and jump through a lot of hoops to actually get that deleted off of your credit report. So you really want to try to avoid having that happen as much as is humanly possible. Well, if a person can't pay off every bill at once, can they work out a payment plan? To you know, avoid that from happening? That's, you know, that's, that's one of the things that a lot of people hear about, but they may not necessarily believe, that you can actually negotiate with your credit card company. There are also a lot of services that are available, and you may have seen their commercials, and you may have seen their names online, but you have to be very, very careful about some of these agencies that are out there that, are, that say they can provide debt relief, because really what happens is they do provide, quote-unquote, debt relief, but they basically put you in bankruptcy. And that's not a position you want to be in either. So you have to be very careful, just like you carefully choose an attorney, just like you carefully choose a financial advisor or any other trusted advisor. You get those people from other trusted advisors or from family members or friends who you really know have your back. You also want to make sure that you have a professional who knows how to successfully negotiate the bill payment plan. And it can be done. It absolutely can be done. Well, for people who don't want to be done with this conversation and get in contact with you, Donna, how do they do that? The easiest way is my phone number, 516-218-6919. Donna, so much information, so helpful. You always, always help listeners survive and thrive. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back 
after this break. At Comprehensive Divorce Solutions, Donna E. La Scala provides the tools for people to deal with assets, debts, equitable distribution, and retirement in divorce negotiations. We hold your hand during and after the divorce process, providing a roadmap of what happens next and into the future. Divorce is difficult whether you're initiating it or not. It's fraught with emotion. When you deal with emotions, you are not dealing with logic, making it more difficult to decide what to do with your money. Hiring a professional to assist you in walking down the money path is crucial to avoiding potentially costly mistakes. Donna's goal is to make sure that each individual knows how they are going to be able to survive and thrive during and after divorce. As a CDFA-trained mediator and collaborative financial neutral, Donna helps people get unstuck and move forward towards their post-divorce future. Call Donna E. Scala at 516-218-6919. 516-218-6919. 